Uh, allow me to invite Moshe Tamir to the stage. We're obviously running a little bit behind, and so uh, I'm the next moderator. I'll squeeze in our session a little bit. Maybe Moshe can save us a couple minutes as well. We'll try to get everyone out of here for 1 o'clock lunch, maybe 1.10. Uh, largest uh, insurance company in Israel, controlling 35% uh, of the market, mainly on long-term savings and financial uh, solutions. We are part of the, uh, la for the European giant called Generali, uh, second largest uh, European insurance uh, company. And actually, uh, in my presentation, I'm going to take you a little bit uh, to the behind the scenes of innovations, because we, you all know technology and you all know what's happening behind the scenes in your sides. But we all have to remember that on the other hand, we have the consumers and we have the organizations that sometimes push for innovation and sometimes can uh, minimize the opportunities for uh, innovation. So just before we start, uh, I would like to, to be a little bit innovative and tell you what my presentation is not going to talk about. I'm not going to talk about money. I'm sure Yossi helped everyone uh, just before to raise all the money they need for their investments. I'm not going to also talk about technology. Uh, I'm sure you're all familiar with the technology. I'm going to a little bit uh, take you over. Can you? Charlie's go at the I'm going to take you a little bit to the behind the scenes of the people, of the consumers and the organization that stands behind uh, each innovation that we all try to push in our organizations. And I'm going to talk to you about the, what we call the financial consumer 3.0. Uh, for the last nine years, I have the honor to work on a variety of projects, uh, whether uh, Israel and whether around the uh, global, which mainly deals about identified trends related to consumers and financial organization and how to build the right platforms to meet them on the, technolog on the technological side. So I'm sure you're all familiar with the main consumer trends. We all live in them. We all live in a world that the consumer uh, rule. He wants everything now, and he wants uh, to get it better, simpler, and cheaper. And uh, the figures that we see today on, on the marketing, on the communication side, uh, the last figure that I saw last week, that 92% 90, of the consumers doesn't believe to whatever, anything the brands try to tell them. 97% of them believe to what their peers tell them. The majority of the population uh, wants to, be, uh, to go online and search for information. And when they go there, on one hand, not all the data is reliable, but on the other hand, they can get a lot of feedback that they couldn't do it in the past. And they also have the possibility to amplify it in the future. So if we look at really uh, on the, if we take the last five to seven years, we can really identify a situation where the needs of the consumers over the globe haven't really changed. Always people want to plan for revolution. They always, you know, they always want to pass the message, but they didn't have the platforms to do it because if, and if you were the best singer in the world, the only place they could hear you is in your bar mitzvah or in your, or, or in your uh, family event. And we always know that people want to take the opportunity and find people like them and get a better deal, but they didn't have the platform to do it. And we always wanted to get some help from friends, but. I don't know how friendly you are, but even if, if in the past you have 20 or 30 good friends, it's still a good figure, but today you can use the friend of your friend of your friend. And actually, if we're really analyzing what's happening, not from technological side, but from consumer perspective side, the really the change of the consumer haven't been really changed over the last years, but their capabilities have been changed. And we all know that uh, identified trends and technological creates a lot of opportunity to generate innovation. But if you look at large and traditional organizations, whether, if, whether they are on the financial services or on health services, on the governmental services, and they, the, those large organizations, they really want to do innovation. But we have to remember that on the one hand, there is innovation, and on the other hand, there is an organization. An organization is a complex of a lot of people. Usually, most of the organization, especially even if you look at the financial services, they make good money today out of the business model that used to work in the last five years. They know that some things will, happen, will might change in the future, but they still make enough money today, so why do they have to change? So those 
challenging. I faced them on, a, uh, on the last years, and I can share with you some of the experiences that I had on a personal level on how uh, we experience the opportunity to push innovation in a classical, traditional financial organization. So five years ago, the CEO of Generali, Generali again, the second largest uh, insurance company in Europe with more than 450 billion US, uh, euros assets under management, more than 80,000 employees around the globe, spread it over 350 companies, decided that they want to do innovation. The CEO declared, uh, meeting with analysts, that he's going to invest 250 million euros in innovative projects. What is innovative? I mean, I'm not sure everybody will did really, really understood that, that situation. What does it mean? So when we went into the organization and tried to push for innovation projects and innovation change of mind, we face a classical traditional organization which doesn't really want to change something that works today and everybody understands that something is going to change in the future. I don't know about you, but especially people that are coming from IT or classical uh, innovative companies, the innovation is part of their DNA. If you go to Google and they have 10 opportunities for innovation, nine fail and one make, made it, they will always look at the one that made it. If you look to insurance company, and you, make, you have 10 opportunities, nine didn't work, and one did work, automatically you will have to manage what is the risk of this opportunity that, that, that didn't work out. So when we came up with a model uh, on how to engage strategic risk management, which is the terminology that insurance company and financial services, especially after the 2008 crisis, are really understand, we found out that we can push and enhance the organization to go for innovation while we define a strategic risk management process which drive to innovation, and I'm going to elaborate it a little bit more. And I'm just going to write, strategic risks emerge from changes, mostly external, that our organization will experience that would have an impact on our survival and performance. This risk is a function of the misfit between our business identity and the future systematic and long-term evolution of the external environment. When we start talking that language and we explain to the organization that something's happening outside, it's a totally trend, it's not going to happen tomorrow. It's going to, come, going to come in five or six years. And we are not there today in terms of our organization. This misfit can create a big risk for the company. And just to give you some examples of, of what we call uh, uh, areas of risk, it can be science and technology. We can all understand the impact of science and technology on the mortality rate and the, on the life expectancy which is going higher. The environment and climate change, which automatically change a lot of the way we have analyzed if the all insurance sector is based on the fact that we take the past and we predict the future, definitely what's happening here over the last three years, it's, it doesn't have any related uh, information for that. Globalization, consumer culture, which is something I'm going a little bit more in depth go today, and social demographic change. When we identify that those trends, something's happening in the external environment and the current situation in the group, is, is not the same situation. This is a risk that we have to minimize. And the best way to minimize this risk is to open up a portfolio of opportunities. Those portfolio of opportunities are portfolio of innovative projects. And those innovative projects will be implemented when relevant. So when we start talking in that language, we found out that the organization can understand it and can implement it in the future. So just before we're going into some, sharing some more experiences on, on our life, on our day-to-day -day life, I'm sure you're all familiar with the Netflix and Blockbuster uh, uh, case study. Blockbuster, uh, 2004, after 20 years of operation, of 9,100 stores around the globe in 25 countries, they made a very good business model, they make enough money, but there are two problems in their business model. One, they make a lot of money from consumer who had late returns on their videos. Second, they have a minimum uh, availability of new movies to the client. Netflix came into the market very quick in 1998, and they opened up the platform that you can invite a movie from wherever you are, and you can not return it when you can return it whenever you want. This is actually rule the situation of Blockbuster as a market leader. In the future, Netflix with a streaming video opened this platform to the web, and you're all familiar with the results of Blockbuster. Actually, Blockbuster identified the trend of the digital and the consumer net a little bit late and little bit little. So how this is all related into our world? I'm sure that you're all, you're all familiar uh, uh, 
whatever your financial institute or medical or any organization or which rely on distributors, you always have these dilemmas. Something happens on the consumer side. Consumers are changing their mode of operation. And on the other hand, you have distribution platforms that are making enough money for you today, but you have to think how you're going to leverage them in the future. On the distribution model, I'm going to talk a little bit how we face innovation and how we have to look at innovation on the distribution model and second on the consumer side. But finally, we all have to remember that it's all have to be merged together in, all, in order to have a full solution. Distribution, uh, at least in the insurance industry, is traditional companies relying on physical network. We call it them insurance agents. They are all over the world and they generate 85 or 90 percent of the profitability of most of the insurance companies around the world. On the other hand, there is a trend of everything goes digital. It, I don't want to call it a trend. It's the reality already. Maybe five years ago it was a trend. Now it's a reality. And, it's not, uh, and, and the only way to merge them together and see how they, they both trends go together are just creating a third trend, which we call it a digital. Nobody really, you just saw in the forum uh, just before, Twitter is on offline, and then you're on the online, and then you're going to the physical world, digital world. The whole world is merging us together. And if you look at about, just to give you some information from our figure, 2010, on the, on the US market, 50% of the people that search for car insurance, they went for the web. 40% uh, of the people that search for life insurance, they, were, they went to the web. Still, most of those people are not buying on the web. They are not buying on the digital platform. But they're going, they're searching for information, and they, they look for the physical place to, co to complete the transaction. I don't know if you're familiar, but the number one, the most expensive word in Google PPC is insurance. The, the most, not in the financial services, in all the services. This is the most in, uh, expensive word in Google. Second is loans, and third is mortgage. See, how is the financial world goes online? Everybody search online, everybody collect information online, but they still at least as of today, going to the physical, physical place to consult those products. This, is, this became a big challenge for, for us and for a lot of the traditional companies who had to face with the fact that our platforms are physical, people are going online, how we merge them together. Uh, going to the banking, if you look from 2001 to 2006, online banking reaching more than 40% penetration while branches and telephone are going uh, smaller. I think if we had another slide here, we could, we could see that the mobile is really, really getting much more quicker into the banking sector. Current estimations are that by 2015, 25% of the transactions in the financial services will be fully on the mobile, cell, mobile and cellular platforms. So if we look at that perspective on the distribution, we have a big challenge. But think about the consumers. We, everybody is now, I don't know about your countries, but in Israel it is a big trend to start and talk about financial education, financial needs. Let's have the people know and understand the importance of savings, etc., etc. But we have a two big, big uh, trends that if we look at them, there is a big gap. First trend, we call it the nowism. Everybody wants everything now. And right now, because they want, no doubt that the digital platforms enable it. If you have your mobile phone, you can get an instant message for everything now. You can see everything. You get everything online. This is, this is have a big, big impact on the financial sectors. If you think about the level of credit that is now ever than, than ever in the past, people are not saving for the future. And on the other end, there is another trend, and I'm, I'm sure GE Capital definitely deals this on the medical side, on the future. People... I mean, if, if I look at my parents, they, will be, they are totally different than I'm, the way I'm going to be parents when I'm going to retire. People want to live as long as they care, and they, they want to live in a different way. And if you look at those two trends, those are two, two different trends. On the other hand, you want to consume the maximum you can get today and get money from the future to the, to, to the present. On the other hand, you want to have a different life on retirement. Even if you take these two trends into the way people save for the long run, this is a big, big dilemma that we are facing in that perspective and how we can manage it. And if we take another two parameters that have a big, big impact on those long-term saving, first, the life expectancy. I don't know if you're all familiar, definitely people that live on, you know, work on the Medicare area understand that the life expectancy is going very, very quickly higher. Uh, we are talking about every four years that the life expectancy is going one year 
uh, forward. This is the current estimation. Nobody knows about the future. The last figure that I, I read was that a new baby that was born now will probably live until 105 years old. This is the, on the one hand. On the second hand, interest rates all over the world are going lower. So if you think about those two trends of life expectancy going up, interest rates going down, those two parameters to, together create a situation where the pension or the savings that you are saving today for your retirement will probably will not be enough. And we as a financial service have to find a way to first increase the savings and, and the platforms that enable people to understand and know how much they have to save for the future. And in parallel, we have to give them the opportunity to select the way they, can, they want to do it. So uh, this is really, um, we, we are in a snapshot of uh, you know, 15 to 20 minutes, so I'm trying to cover a lot of the stuff. But I'm just telling you that we as a traditional company, and I'm sure that in other sectors, are facing uh, challenges that usually relies to consumer trends and in parallel distribution channels and business model today that might work. I mean, if you look at financial services, even if they have a, a problem with the, with the future trends on their business model, usually you would not see, the, the, you would not see it on their P&L on a specific year because a specific year generate an income which has been created few or ten, five or 10 or 15 years in the past. So this is a big dilemma. How you want to be? Do you want to be a market leader and change the business model for the future? But this might have an impact on your business model today. Those dilemmas is something that we found very, very interesting. And this is the area that we have uh, kind of worked around innovation, how to innovate in financial services, giving all those um, uh, dilemmas. So just to tell you a little bit about our experience uh, in Migdal, uh, and we, we understood that we have to find a solution which goes on the one hand to the distribution, on the second one to the consumer. On the distribution, we have to take the, and empower the fact that we have a physical way. Other companies thought that, okay, we have two options, whether to go direct to the consumer and tell them, okay, you go to my website, you go to my mobile, you buy this product, you get it half price, and that's it. Or we, we understood that we have to find to optimize and give those uh, distribution channels, uh, insurance agents or financial advisors, the platforms to combine the fact that people are going online to collect information, but on the other hand, they want some physical pe person to talk to. Because when you talk about your life insurance, about your medical situation, about your long-term saving account, you want to know that there is somebody there and it's not only you and the computer, whatever the brand is. So we found out that we have to, to find a way to give the independent agents a platform uh, that gives them all the network on the web to work. On one hand, on the second, uh, just if you want to read a little bit more about it, uh, Forrester has just published an article uh, last month about our strategy and how we are using the independent platforms, uh, independent agents, financial advisors, using digital platforms to optimize their way. On the other end, the consumers, we all understand that if you really want to have a better save savings for long run on the consumer side, an increase of their saving, you have to find the way to engage the clients. And the best way to engage is digital platform. We, have, we are really believer of the fact that if you tell me something, I will forget. You show me something, I might remember. But if you get me involved through and through digital platforms, we really believe that we can do it, it's going to work. And we have created uh, a portal and a lot of tools for financial education on the web where clients can do it and, and generate content as well as on YouTube and specific uh, stuff which people might find it much more intuitive uh, to understand the financial world, which usually is a complex one. And finally, uh, I mean, I don't know if we have the time, but uh, there no time. There is a short movie which emphasizes the old things together, so it depends on the audience, whether the audience wants to do it, we can show. Uh, show it, okay. This is demonstrate the the way we, we believe the new financial advisor should work in the new environment, merging the consumer trends and our platforms. All the platforms are working. Yeah?
journey that we are merging the clients and our distribution channel together. Our, the main opportunities I see for the future, especially for financial services, were probably around mobile and location, which today nobody still found the right way to combine them the right way. Tablets and illustration, the ability to illustrate through tablets is a great opportunity to increase the potential of savings. And definitely the F or the friends factor, which still didn't translate it into a business model in the financial organization, is a great opportunity that we see for the future. So if anyone finds this relevant and would like to get some more information, this is where we live. Thank you very much and enjoy your stay. Bye-bye. <laughs>